other stream starting. Let me just uh, post it on Discord. Yay! We need some music. I was thinking of searching for Caesar, the the game series, the city builder series. But I don't remember the music for those games. I hope it's good. I like the games. <clears throat> I think I only played Scissor 3. Yeah. Okay, now I remember the music. It's good. Oh, it's just too loud. This is not too good today. Hello, fish bites. How are you? Um, is this volume all right? I hope so. So last time we were doing exercises, and this time uh, we still have exercises to do, and they turned they turned out to be pretty hard to good luck. If you know Latin or can help me in some way, please do. Okay, that's fine. Fish bites, I'll see you another time if you can't watch. Um, so, Ostianon, something aroma, said Romum est. So, this is like close and far. And the word for that was um, Proppe. But how would I... what was far? Purple was near, right? I don't think I've been adding words here too much. Purple is near. Procul is far. Appears you cannot load the video. That's weird. Too bad. Um, I hope the video is working. So the uh, Procool and Prope for far and near, and uh, Procul was Procul was far. Prope is near. Is this what you want me? I would say we have yeah Procul Prope. Why do you have Ab? I don't remember if, if it is close or far. Okay. Um.
I don't know, I'm gonna try Prakul Ab Romam Aced. Uh, quid Venit? Taque aute munde quo uh, This is like where, right? What was where? Ubi But it's... I think it's a different word Although I have no idea which... I don't think it's Subi. From... Ab... Ubi... Maybe from where T it adds Willem it. Okay, let's see if this is correct. Chapter 6 Pensum Bay Is it Bay in Latin? I don't know Non Procul Oh, I got those mixed up I mean, I got them right, but I didn't know it was close I didn't have a map And there's no need for the ab, it's just propen procul. But there. They're. Uh, like this. Okay. It's working for me. Okay. So, do we have. Nope, unde. This was completely wrong. But it's what is the difference? Do we have Undain or Okay we have Unde here. Maybe it's when you're asking a question. From where, yeah. When you're asking, you use unde. I should add this. Okay. Hello, Safir, how are you? Um. It ad villam it. Let's see if I got that one right at least. Yep, so one out of four. Do servi eum de carry him. So like portat. But they, they carry him. So it's like portam, maybe? We can check the the conjugations. So it's like T 
this is active. Third pure portant. Good as always, how are you today? Oh nice. Um I'm good. Um my voice is not so good at for some reason maybe. It's the cold weather. So do a servio important two slaves carry him. Cirrus et Leander, qui something lecticum ambulant, duos something portant. I don't know, I don't even know what word's supposed to go here. It's so weird that you, that you have to guess the word. What is Qui again? So, like that, carry. Lecticum ambulant. So, this is carry again. Qui portant. Lect Ambulant. But this isn't passive, maybe. Uh, the music stopped for some reason. Am I still online? I wonder. What's going on? Oh, this is strange. Did I milk my thing? I don't know what's going on. What's up? Hmm. Oh, YouTube's just not playing this this music for me. <clears throat> well, what? Maybe it's just there's no audio in the video. Like it goes silent after a while. Yep. Oh, this is so strange. Okay, anyway, sorry about that. Let's keep going. Um, what was I looking at? I was looking for the conjugations. What is passive portantur? That would be my guess. But this can't be. I mean, I'm not. No, I'm not sure what word you want here. Do was something portant. Oh, they are walking like in front or behind, that was it. And they're carrying two bags. So I need the bags which are... Duos...
so I think Sakus is bag. And that would be... The bags are being carried. So... They're in the accusative. And they're this... Second decline engine. So this is Sakus. And uh, what I, I don't even remember if they were in front or behind. And I don't remember what is the award. So ante and post. So this is like either ante or post. But I don't remember if they were walking behind or in front. So we're just gonna check the answers for that. Do serve eu portant? I think that was correct. Sirius at Leandre qui post, so they were. They are in. F oh. They are in front. I think. Do sacos. And the portant was correct. And the sacos was almost correct, except it is it is with two C's for some reason. Maybe the word just has two C's and I forgot. Yep, apparently so. Okay. So Saku City non uh, as big as Tamquam. Sakus qui. What? what? What word would go here? Why is there a word here? It's portatur. Portatur is in the. Portatur is the inactive form or a passive form? Passive, so maybe there is an A here. Sirius non tem. I don't remember. Uh, what is this supposed to be? I don't know what these words are supposed to be. Sirius non tam. I have no idea, I'm gonna have to check. So we were at uh, Sakos. Saco City non tam magnus est quam sacus. Okay, we got that right. Qui Leandro portatur. Not. Okay, yeah. It was. I thought it was maybe a not, but the non is there. But yo, you you were saying something else. Anyway. Um. Itaque. Non tam fessus est. I 
I have no idea what this even means. I completely forgot this. Itaquen faces. Let's check that out. Ita in this manner, so and in this manner. And Fesus is tired. Did I have that? Fessy tired. Okay. I probably have Itaqua here as well. Nope. Ita in this manner. So there's usually Ita plus Que, which is and. And in this manner. Okay. Medus. So anyway, the, the guy's not as tired because he's carrying a smaller bag. Is this, is this music too loud? Uh, Medus, something dominos, domino non est. So this is like the fear, right? What was the fear again? No, this is near. Now Medus, domino, iratum, something. I think this is just Brokpi. Because he's not near the master. Num. Num is four, I think. For Medus, Omenu, Iratum. Like he made him angry, maybe? I can't see what's fitting there. No medus domino iratum. Timet? Maybe it is the fear thing? For me, Medus, yeah, teammate. But is this, is it like teammate? Ah, uh, the clansions. Is it a declension or a conjugation? It's a conjugation. Yes. It's teammates, I think. Medus servus something improbus est. Is it not just improbus? If it is servus, it is improbus. Why did you put it here? Um, medus et Julius non something. Nuts. 
music's too loud. Okay. They're not friends. So that is a Mickey. Amicus, a Mickey. I'm not sure what you're supposed to put there. Maybe Takwe, something like that. It's numb, itakwe, something, the useless words. It's probably something else, but something similar. Um, we'll see. Oh, a pood, not prope. So swift, not near. But I prope is probably correct. It's just not what he wanted. Timet. We got that right. Malus. Oh, he wanted the, not the word itself, but the synonym. That was confusing. And what was the Itakwe thing? Oh, it was actually Itakwe. What a dumb, we use those words. <laughs> anyway. On a Mickey. Okay, so that was right as well. Said the Nimiki Sunt, but they're enemies. Via Latina, Que East. Uh, when in doubt, write Prope. Romam et Capuam. Non tam est quam via apia. What? Um, this is via apia, right? But what was the other one? When in doubt, right proper. Sure. This makes sense in my head, but it's probably wrong. Oh, this is inter between. Maybe this is longer. Do we have longer here? Long was longer. Sure. Not as long as via Apia. Yeah. Yes, I feel we, we came up with the, the idea at the same time. I think this is correct now. Let's find out. Yeah, via Latina qui est inter Roman Romam et Capuam, non tam longa est quam via Apia. Yay! We almost got all of that wrong, but we ended up getting all of it right. That is fine by me. And now the music is too quiet. 
This is feral music. It's not quite the correct historical setting, but uh, let's give it a try. How are you, sniper? So. Um de ambulat medus is is Roman ambulat. Qui amica eius Roman habitat. Rome habitat. Cornelius equals said C. What was the word that was just like said? It was um, said is but, and the word was. It was a longer autem. I don't know what this C is about. <clears throat> Said C. I don't understand. Okay. Altem Roma Tusculum. It maybe he's going. Tusculum is uh, it's like in the behind him. Isn't it the one we used post and uh, what's the other one? Post and ante. So Tusculum uh, not behind post a ante eum est Roma Cornelius equa Vehitur, something like that. But a equo, but a horse is carrying. But a equo, not equos or anything. So, so if it is equo, this is like ablative or dative, and that is not active that is passive so this is like vehitur is non Ambulat, he doesn't walk. Julius et Cornelius ad villas suas. So it is the plural of to go, eont. And then we're gonna check if all of this is correct. Where did we stop? Via Apia. Q 
core ambulat. So um, this is not Undi. Undi is like where from. And Kuo There's a fam famous film, right? Kuo Vadis Kuo Kui Kuo Kuo Amazingly I don't have Kuo and I don't remember what it means just where who is where where does Medus walk I'm pretty sure Qui is because Nam Amika is the Roman habitat for can it couldn't it be Qui? What is wrong with Qui? Other than that's not the word you wanted me to use. No, Qui is which? What is because? Quia. I'm pretty sure it could be Quia. Okay. The music got intense. Okay. Oh, uh, Quia is because. Couldn't it be Quia, Amica, uses Rome Habitat because his friend lives in Rome? Anyway, Cornelius. Autumn. Yeah. Roman Tusculum it. Yep. Tusculum est ante eum post eum est Roma. Oh god, I got those mixed up. So, what is the meaning for post? Oh, post is behind, ante is in front. I I got the meaning confused. Post is behind. Yeah, it, post just sounds to me like in front. That's gonna be annoying. Um, Antepost Eco Vehitur Eco Vehitur, okay. Non ambulat, ambulat, and now the final one is Eunt. Yep, correct. Nice, and so we finish Pensum B. And that is enough Latin for today, we're gonna do some reading now. And next time we're gonna do these ones, which are the hardest ones. And uh, yeah, this, this is just gonna be pretty much impossible to do, but I'm gonna just give them a quick try next time. And uh, not to worry too much about it. So we can continue reading more and uh, learning more vocabulary and stuff. Okay. Plutarch, fall of the Roman Republic. We were reading the life of Caesar. Out of the whole number of senators, only a very few used to attend the meetings presided over by Caesar. I remember reading this. So maybe we're here. 
but the most disgraceful political action of the time was considered to be the election to the tribuneship. Nope, I read this too. I was here. So much for the accounts of Caesar's career before his Gallic campaigns. But okay. After this, he seems, as it were, to have made a new start and to have entered upon a different way of life and of achievement. And the period of the wars which he now fought, and of the campaigns by which he subjugated Gaul, proved him to be as good a soldier and a commander as any of those who have been most admired for their leadership and shown themselves to be the greatest generals. In fact, if we compare him with such men as Fabius and Scipio and Metellus, or with those who were either his contemporaries or lived a little before his time, such as Sulla, Marius and the two Luculli, or even with Pompey himself, whose fame for every kind of military excellence was at this period in full flower and reaching up to the skies, we shall find that Caesar's achievements surpassed them all. That's pretty impressive. How long have you, have you been learning Latin and how often do you do Latin? Um, maybe a couple months or something. And my the extent of my learning is just reading that book, which is uh, Lingua Latina Per Se Illustrata. I'm gonna write the name in the chat. And I just read that book and do the exercises and check on the dictionary and stuff. It's a good book. Uh, I do it on when I stream only, so that's like three times per week for 30 to 40 minutes. Anyway. He may be considered superior to one because of the difficulty of the country in which he fought, to another because of the extent of his conquests, to another because of the numbers and strength of the enemy forces which he defeated, to another because of the savage treacherous character of the tribes whose goodwill he won, to another because of the reasonable and considerate way in which he treated prisoners, yeah right, to another because of the gifts he gave to his soldiers, and the acts of kindness to them, and he surpassed them all in the fact that he fought more battles than any of them and killed greater number of the enemy. For, though his campaigns in Gaul did not last for as much as 10 complete years, in this time he took by storm more than 800 cities, subdued 300 nations and he fought pitched battles at various times with 3 million men, of whom he destroyed 1 million in the actual fighting and took another million prisoners. I don't know how much those numbers are to be believed, but there you go. Yeah, no problem, Sniper. His ability to secure the affection of his men and to get the best out of them was remarkable. Soldiers who in other campaigns had not shown themselves to be any better then the average became irresistible and invincible and ready to confront any danger once it was a question of fighting for Caesar's honor and glory. There are many examples of this. Asilius, for instance, who in the naval battle of Marseilles boarded an, an enemy ship and had his right hand cut off with a sword, but still kept hold of his shield with the other hand and struck his enemies in the face with it, till he drove them all back and got possession of the ship. Then there was Cassius Scava, who in the battle of Dyrrhachium had one eye shot out with an arrow, his shoulder transfixed with one javelin and his thigh with another. He had received on his shield 130 darts and javelins and then called out to the enemy as though he intended to surrender. When two of them came up to him, he cut off the shoulder of one of them with his sword, struck the other one in the face and forced him to run away and got off safely himself with the help of his comrades. Okay, we're getting graphical descriptions here. Then there was the occasion in Britain 
when some of the leading centurions had got themselves into a marshy place with water all around and were being set upon by the enemy. An ordinary soldier, while Caesar himself was watching the fighting, rushed into the thick of it and, after showing the utmost daring and gallantry, drove the natives off and rescued the centurions. Finally, with great difficulty, he made his own way back after all the rest, plunged into the muddy stream and, without his shield, sometimes swimming and sometimes wading, just managed to get across. Caesar and those of him were full of admiration for the man and shouted out to him in joy as they came to meet him. But the soldier was thoroughly de dejected and with tears in his eyes fell at Caesar's feet and asked to be forgiven for having let go of his shield. What? <laughs> Then too, in Africa, Scipio captured one of Caesar's ships in which Grenius Petro who had been appointed quaestor was sailing. Scipio gave the other passengers over to his soldiers as booty, but, the, but told the quaestor that he would spare his life. Grenius, however, said that with Caesar's soldiers the custom was to give, not to receive mercy, and so plunged his sword into his body and killed himself. It was Caesar himself who inspired and cultivated the spirit, this passion for distinction among his men. He did it in the first place because he made it clear, by the ungrudging way in which he would distribute rewards and honors, that he was not amassing a great fortune from his wars in order to spend it on his personal pleasures or on any life of self-indulgence. Instead, he was keeping it, as it were, in trust a fund open to all for the reward of valor and his own share in all this wealth was no greater than what he bestowed on his soldiers who deserved it. And secondly, he showed that there was no danger which he was not willing to face, no form of hard work from which he excused himself. So far as his fondness for taking risks went, his men, who knew his passion for distinction, were not surprised at it. But they were amazed at the way in which he would undergo hardships which were, it seemed, beyond his physical strength to endure. For he was a slightly built man, had a soft and white skin, suffered from headaches, and was subject to epileptic fits. His first epileptic attack took place, it is said, in Cordoba. Yet so far from making his poor health an excuse for living an easy life, He used warfare as a tonic for his health. By long hard journeys, simple diets, sleeping night after night in the open and rough living, he fought off his illness and made his body strong enough to resist all attacks. As a matter of fact, most of the sleep he got was in chariots or litters. Rest for him was something to be used for action, and in the daytime, he would be carried round to the garrisons and cities and camps and have sitting with him one slave who was trained to write from dictation as he went along, and behind him a soldier standing with a sword. He traveled very fast. For instance, on his first journey from Rome he reached the Rhone in seven days. He had been an expert rider from boyhood, he had trained himself to put his hands behind his back and then, keeping them tightly clasped, to put his horse to its full gallop, and in the Gallic campaigns he got himself into the habit of dictating letters on horseback, keeping two secretaries busy at once, or even more, according to Opius. It is said too that Caesar was the first to arrange for what amounted to conversations with his friends by letters when, owing to the numbers of things he had to do or because of the very size of the city, he could not spare the time to see them personally on matters that required a quick decision. He was not the least fussy about his food, as is shown by the following story. When Valerius Leo was entertaining him to dinner at Milan, he served up asparagus dressed with myrrh instead of with olive oil. Caesar ate this quite calmly himself and reprimanded his friends when they objected to the dish, 
If you don't, if you didn't like it, he said, there was no need to have it in it. But if one reflects on one's host's lack of breeding, it merely shows that one is ill-bred oneself. There was also an occasion when he was forced to take refuge from a storm in a poor man's hut, when he found that this consisted of only one room, and even this room was scarcely big enough to accommodate one person, he said to his friends that honors should go to the strongest, but necessities should go to the weakest, and so he told Opius to lie down there, while he himself and the others slept under the projecting roof of the doorway. His first war in Gaul was against the Helveti and the Tigurini. These tribes had set fire to 12 cities and 400 villages and were pushing forward into the Roman port of Gaul, just as the Kimberi and Teutonis had done in the past. Um. Okay. They were considered to be just as brave as those former invaders and just as numerous. There were 300,000 of them in all, of whom 190,000 were fighting men. The Tigrini were crushed at the river Arar, not by Caesar himself, but by Labienus, acting under Caesar's, Caesar's instructions. Then the Hevari unexpectedly attacked Caesar on the march, while he was leading his army towards a friendly city. He succeeded, however, in falling back onto a stronger position, where he brought his men together and drew them up in order of battle. When a horse was brought to him, he said, After I have won the battle, this horse will come in useful for the pursuit. But now let us get to the enemy. And so he led the charge on foot. There was a long and hard struggle before he pushed back the enemy's line. But the hardest work of all was at the rampart of wagons. Here not only did the men themselves stand firm and fight, but their wives and children too joined in the resistance and, fighting to the death, were cut down with the men. It was a midnight before the battle was over. Caesar crowned his great victory by an act more noble still. This was a settlement of the natives, more than a hundred thousand of them, who had survived the battle and whom he compelled to go back against the land which they had left and to the cities which they have destroyed. His reason for doing this was because he feared that, if the land were left unoccupied, the Germans would cross the Rhine and take it for themselves. His second war was fought directly in the interests of the Gauls. It was against the Germans, although previously in Rome Caesar had made the German king Ariovistus an ally. However, the Germans were quite intolerable neighbors to the tribes under Caesar's control. It appeared certain that, once they got the chance, they would not remain content with what they had, but would spread over the frontiers and occupy Gaul. Caesar saw that his officers was frightened of the Germans, particularly those young men of good families who had come out with him under the impression that a campaign under, under his leadership would mean easy living and easy money. So he called them to a meeting and told them to go back to Rome. They must not run any undue risks, he suggested, in their present cowardly and soft state of mind. He himself proposed to take just the tenth legion with him and to march against the barbarians. He did not expect to find the enemy any stronger than the Kimbri had been, and he would not be found a worse general than Marius. As a result of this, the 10th legion sent a deputation to him to thank him for his words, and the men of the other legions were furious with their own commanders. The whole army was now willing and eager for action, and they followed Caesar on a march lasting for many days. Finally, they camped within 20 miles or so of the enemy. The very fact that they had approached so near had had a damaging effect on the morale of Ariovistus. He had never imagined that Romans would attack Germans, in fact he thought it unlikely that they would put a, put a resistance when the Germans attacked. So he was now amazed at Caesar's daring, 
and at the same time he noticed the lack of confidence in his own men. The German spirit was still more discouraged by the prophecies made by their holy women, who used to foretell the future by observing the eddies in the rivers, and by finding signs in the whirling and in the noise of the water. These women warned them not to fight a battle until the appearance of the new moon. Caesar, lear <coughs> Caesar learned of these prophecies and saw that the Germans were making no move against them. He decided that it would be a good idea, a good thing to engage them while they were in this disheartened state rather than to sit still and wait until the time suited them. So, by making attacks on their entrenchments and the hills where they were encamped, he stung them into action and it induced them to come down from the hills in a fury to fight the matter out. The result was a brilliant victory for the Caesar. He pursued the enemy for 40 miles as far as the Rhine and filled the whole of the plain with the bodies of the dead and their spoils. Adiovistus, with a few followers, succeeded in getting across the Rhine. The number of killed is said to have been 80,000. Okay, it's been like an hour now, so I'll just leave this for next time. So thanks for watching everyone and I'll see you on uh, Monday. Bye bye. Good night.